Okay, well this is something that I've not done before. Not that I've not made a video response before, but the video responses that I've made have usually been substantial, have dealt with issues, and this isn't. If you wanted to file this, if you're in the local music store or DVD store and you were filing video responses away there, you would file it, I think, under non-response. Responses would probably be the category that that would be in. But I make no apologies for doing that. I respond to people's issues when the response that they've made me is worth that kind of response or whether the original video they've made is worth that kind of response I don't think that's the case here and I'll explain why as I go on so what's happened is I made a video on antinatalism in Mendham has responded as I'm, I'm sure that comes as no surprise because he's a firm advocate on YouTube of antinatalism so he felt the need to respond to the video that I'd made fair enough no problems there before I get on to the to the um, the bulk of the beef that I have with the video that he's made. A couple of comments really because the start of his video, he says the start of my video didn't get off to a very good start. That might well be the case. I'm not too bothered about that. But the start of his video got off to a seriously tragic case. It had me laughing at the start of the video. I, I, won't, I won't claim that I was laughing all the way through his video. Um, but I was certainly laughing at the start. The first thing that he did is that he played, he starts playing my video and uh, watches my, um, my my opening titles, my intro, and makes some snarky comments about intros. He obviously sees intros as a bit of an indulgence, you know. You're a bit self-indulgent if you make intros. But I have to ask, what's more self-indulgent, having an eight-second intro to your video or videoing yourself watching somebody else's intro and then spending 30 seconds discussing that intro. Well, I'll leave you to decide. I know which I regard as the most self-indulgent out of any of these. Though I'd have to say, Gary, I don't think anybody who makes videos on YouTube could really uh, fall under the category of the not self-indulgent, could they? Really, there's a certain self-indulgence and a certain narcissism to all of this. I hope you would agree, at least on that point. He then makes a slightly smarmy comment about the fact that I'd say, oh, we're recording. There is a little bit of history. This is probably the only point he makes in the video that I'm actually going to address. Although I have addressed some of the points in, in comments that I left on his video. Um, briefly. But that's all I'm prepared to indulge them as for reasons that will become clear a bit further in this video. Um, but, but this one subject that I will indulge in the reason that I said that at the beginning of my video and it's not the only video that I've ever said that in but it's the only video I've ever broadcast that I've said that in because when I switch my webcam software on for some reason that I've not been able to fathom nine times out of ten when I hit the record key it just kind of creates an empty file and so what I usually do is I usually hit the record key then hit the stop key and then start again but as I hit the record key on this time, I could see because I had the, the, the directory open that the files went in, that it was actually recording a file, a proper file, that it was recording video. Hence I said, uh, oh, we seem to be recording. Hence at the end of the video, I make the point that I've managed to do it all in one take. That was the first take I'd done. It's the first time I'd hit the record button. That's a minor issue really, but I just wanted to get that one out there really, to clear that one up. Then after he does that, then he then, I spent about a minute, this is how bizarre it gets, I spent about a minute talking about um, an, an account of ads video, uh, 100 video series, and, and, and in Mendham's telling me, oh why don't you just get, he stops it sort of every five seconds and keeps saying to me, why don't you just get on with it? Um, but the funny thing is, if you look, he's about four minutes into his fucking video by the time he's finished with that. And I'm only about two minutes into my video. So who's the one that's prevaricating and not really getting on with it? Was it me or was it um, in Mendham? Well, I'll, again, I'll leave that uh, for you to decide. So to get on to the bulk of the video and the bulk of his response and what kind of irks me about it. Um, before I do that, what I want to do is I want to tell you what I like about the YouTube format. This is very relevant. 
I think that when we have conversations with each other face to face, debates, they don't tend to work out very well, do they? I think we all tend to do this. I tend to do this as much as anybody else. I'm just as guilty of this as, as anybody is, is that we tend not to listen to what the other person is saying. What we're doing is while the other person's talking, we're busy loading the, reloading the torpedo tubes ready for our response. We couldn't really give a crap about what they have to say unless they a ask us a direct question that we can't get out of. We're not considering what they're saying. What we're doing is we're considering how we can counter and get our point across. I think that's a pretty human universal uh, that and probably it's the kind of argumentative bastards that make videos on YouTube that are kind of the people that are perhaps most susceptible to doing that kind of thing in the first place. So one of the things I like about YouTube is whilst when I watch somebody's video I might mentally be doing the same thing, once I've watched the video I then have a chance to go away and reflect on it to think on what's being said and to consider what I'm going to say in response prior to having done that. Now I'm not so conceited as to say this gives me a really great chance of, of my mind being swayed because it doesn't. 99.9 .9 times out of 100 I'm still going to make the same point. I'm still not going to be swayed by the argument. Even if it's quite a good one we've all got our own biases haven't we Gary? And we're all going to stick to our guns perhaps more often than we should. But at least I allow for the possibility that something that somebody says might impact on my brain uh, to some extent. I haven't totally indulged in some kind of methodology of responding to somebody that rules that out entirely. And it has come to pass over the time that I've been on YouTube that somebody has said something that's really struck a chord with me. Somebody said something and I've thought, you know what? That just causes me to reconsider what my position is on that. That just causes me to have a little bit of a rethink on that one. So to Gary's response to me, what it might be worth doing if you've never watched one of Gary's videos is to watch a few minutes of it. Perhaps watch the first 10 minutes. That's probably all you're really going to need to see to get a, a feel of what's going on here. It was actually rather embarrassing. What I've suggested is, is that the best thing to do is to listen to somebody's argument in its entirety. It's a little bit insulting not to, to be quite frank. And then once you've done that, to go away and have a think about it and then make your response. The, 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 perhaps the worst thing that you could do is to respond before you've heard even a fraction of the argument. But embarrassingly, Gary does even worse than that. As soon as I mention the word antinatalism, he jumps in and launches some kind of tirade defence uh, against whatever argument he thinks I'm going to make. And I say it's quite embarrassing because then I don't end up making the argument that he thought I was going to make in the first place. Now, if I'd have done that, I'd think, oh, bollocks, I've screwed up here. I've just started defending a point that this guy's accepting. He's not even going to argue the philosophical case of antinatalism. And like a twat, I've jumped in um, and jumped on an argument that he's ended up not making. But it's interesting. Gary has done this so many times. And, and, and if you think that I'm just making this point because he's responded to me, if you go back to a video of his a couple of months ago, I made this exact point when he responded to somebody else in this way, and what a ludicrous way it is to respond to somebody's arguments. But rather than backtracking and realising he'd done wrong, he just washes over him. He just carries on as if, um, oh, okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, oh, so you accepted, blah, 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 and just carries on. As if, as if he hasn't totally screwed up right from the word go. Anyway, then I start to make my argument. And what Gary does is he responds sentence by sentence. I don't know why he didn't respond word by word, really. Um, it would have made about as much sense. So the point is this. Should I make a response to Gary? Because he does make a couple of points which are worthy of consideration. Um... I, I, oh, I really want to actually talk about them now, but I, but but fuck it, I'm not going to do that because what? Why should I indulge 
Gary in a proper response, in proper consideration of his video. I've watched all 44 minutes. I then spent some time thinking about it. I went to bed, I got up this morning, I thought about it again. But why should I indulge him in, in taking what he has to say seriously when the way that he responds to me and the way that he responds to most people is so insulting and so arrogant? He's obviously assumed in advance Somebody has something to say about antinatalism, therefore they either agree with me or they are wrong. Um, there is nothing that they can say that's going to alter my position, my viewpoint, in any way, because I know that I am right to begin with. Therefore, I don't have to listen to their video, I don't have to listen to their argument and then decide um, what the flaws are in that argument. No, I can just listen to it line by line and deconstruct it as we go along. I accept that Gary didn't like my argument. I've no problem with that. But what about if I provided a real kick-ass argument, a killer argument, an actual defeater for Gary's position? What I know for definite is that it would have gone straight over his head. It wouldn't have touched the fucking sides. And the reason it wouldn't have touched the sides is because the way he considers what other people have to say is not only insulting, but he does it in a manner that, that, that denies the, the argument any chance of having any impact on his thoughts. If Gary isn't going to entertain what I have to say, then I'll be fucked if I'm going to entertain what he has to say. I made a few comments on his video just touching on some of the points that he said. That's all that I'm going to do. I'm not going to engage him anymore. Um, I'll engage people who make a proper video response having actually listened to what I've had to say in advance. Anybody who just wants to make a cuntish uh, response such as Gary's done, well, you can just talk to yourself. Thanks for watching, everybody, and bye for now.